DIY pellet stove. I thought I'd take this opportunity to show you how I go about doing it. My stove happens to be a Harman Accentra uh, pellet stove. It has a bottom auger feeder, uh, automatic ignition, computer controlled. It's a very nice stove, but every now and then it does need a good cleaning. I use two different methods to clean the stove. Uh, the first method is what I call an efficiency cleaning. It's essentially a regular maintenance kind of thing. When the ash pit is full, uh, I'm going to empty the ash pit, I'm going to clean the glass, and I'm going to clean the heat exchangers just to make sure that the stove is as efficient as possible. Uh, at the end of the heating season, that's when I do the big clean out, and the big clean out involves uh, cleaning the flue pipe on the outside of the house, taking the bottom off, running up uh, a brush up and down on the inside of that flue pipe, and making sure the entire inside of the stove is completely clean. But uh, even though uh, by the calendar it's still it's spring here in New England, it's been a rough winter 2015, um, there's still a few more nights when we're going to want to run the stove. So this isn't the end of the season cleaning quite yet. This is just going to be uh, the first one I talked about, which is the efficiency cleaning. So what kind of equipment am I going to be using to do this? Well, I have a variety of things uh, that I'll be employing during the cleaning process. Uh, one of the things that I strongly recommend are some vinyl gloves. Uh, these things are great. They help protect uh, your, your hands. I'm really tired of digging black crud out from my fingernails, so having uh, disposable vinyl gloves is uh, a, a good way to keep your hands clean. Uh, however, those gloves aren't really uh, sturdy enough to withstand the, uh, the process of taking out the iron plates that are inside here. So in order to make those gloves a little sturdier, I put on regular uh, work gloves over the top. And these happen to be just plain cotton gloves with a rubberized uh, palm to them. Uh, for the glass, a little bit of glass cleaner and some paper towels come in real handy. But uh, the meat of the matter is cleaning the internal parts of the stove. For that, I'm going to be employing a couple of different uh, brushes here. I have, uh, uh, I don't even know what you'd call this, a radiator brush maybe? These are both kind of the same thing, radiator brushes. They are uh, nylon bristle brushes. You can get them at any home center store, Walmart, uh, department stores, uh, where they sell cleaning supplies. It has a twisted metal uh, handle to it and uh, that that allows you to bend and shape your brush into whatever kind of shape that you need to reach the spots that you want to reach within the inside of your stove. Uh, on top of that I'm going to be employing a large piece of cardboard that I'm going to cover the floor with. That way I can take the parts out of the stove and place them down on my hardwood floor down here that you can't see it's just off screen. But uh, I have a nice hardwood floor, and I don't want to scuff up the floor. I don't want to get it all dirty. Uh, so I'm going to lay down a large piece of cardboard that I've cut out just a spot that fits in the front. Uh, so it allows me to actually wrap around the stove on three sides. I'm using a, a, a clamp light. Uh, I usually don't use a clamp light, but for the purpose of making a video, I'm using a clamp light to help light the interior of the stove. I usually use just a regular desk lamp, and I do a lot of the cleaning blind, but I'm going to try and get the camera in to where you can see what's going on on the inside. Uh, the big part of the cleanup, the noisy part, is uh, I use a shop vac. Just a regular shop vac, nothing special about it, no special filters, it's just an ordinary shop vac. Now, word of warning, okay? This stove has been off for well over 12 hours. It is ice cold right now. Uh, do not ever use a shop vac, even with a liner inside. Don't ever use a shop vac to clean out a stove that is warm. Don't use a shop vac if there's even the remote possibility that there are any embers still burning inside the stove. For the most part, I use the vacuum cleaner not to really clean up ash or anything like that, even though I do pick up a little bit of it, but mostly 
to draw the air out of the stove and filter it before it makes dust everywhere. Because while I'm using these brushes here, uh, they, it makes a lot of dust. I'm going to be using the shop vac to create kind of a negative uh, uh, pressure inside the stove, which will allow me to capture all that dust without having it injected all over the house. Uh, the last piece of equipment I think I'll be using is going to be just a regular old household vacuum cleaner and that is going to be used when everything is finished and the stove is all back together. I'll just do a little quick dusting around the area to make sure I don't have uh, soot or ash anywhere. Regarding disposal of the ashes, again this is a second uh, thing you got a, a safety precaution when you dispose of your stove ash, be sure you do it in an appropriate metal container with a tight fitting lid. Uh, you can get those little buckets at, uh, again, home center stores, a metal ash pail. Um, there are vacuum cleaners that are certified for stove cleaning. Uh, they're very expensive and uh, if you allow your stove to get icy cold like this one is, been off for a number of hours, over 12 hours. Uh, if you allow your stove to, to, to get icy cold, then uh, I don't see a need for using a specialized vacuum cleaner. I've been doing it this way for a number of years, and as you can see, the house is still here, so uh, I haven't had any problems with that. However, be very, very cautious when you are cleaning your stove that you ensure that there is no chance for any kind of spark. A single spark will do it, okay? So no chance of a spark or any warm embers inside the stove before you begin this project. So let's, uh, let's get started and I'll show you uh, step by step what I'm going to do. Okay, so what I've done is I've taken this piece of cardboard and I cut a couple of slots in it. This is the width of the stove right here and I just fold one of these pieces under like that and then I can take the cardboard and lay it around the stove like that. That will... There we go. There we go. So now I've got almost like having a drop cloth down but now I've got cardboard on the floor where I can put down those cast iron parts without damaging my floor or getting anything on my uh, rug. So let's take a look inside the stove. I've got my gloves on and uh, we're going to lift the lever, slowly open this up so I don't make a big cloud of dust. And it's, uh, you can see there's a lot of ash in here. And uh, I'm going to uh, move the camera in, I think. Okay, so uh, here's the inside of the stove. You can see there's the uh, fire, uh, the burn pit there. And down below, uh, it's hard to see, but I'm going to pull it out. There, here's my, my ash pit. And, uh, well, you can tell that there's uh, quite a bit of ashes in it, but there's still a long way to go. But, uh, that's about uh, maybe uh, 15 bags of pellets right there. The ash of 15 bags of pellets, so there's still plenty of room to go. I could, uh, I don't necessarily have to empty the ash pit right now, but uh, I felt it's been a while. Here's what I'm talking about with the uh, the efficiency cleaning, though. You see down in the bottom of the stove, right down here in the corners, uh, there's a lot of ash built up. That's just the stuff that didn't quite fall into the ash pit. And uh, I'm not really going to worry too much about that. I am going to get a putty knife or something and just uh, scoop that stuff up and out of there, throw it into the ash pit. But uh, for the most part, I'm really worried about what is behind these metal plates right here. These metal plates are uh, behind those are the uh, heat exchangers. And I'm going to show you how that works in just a minute. Okay. One tool I forgot to mention, it's a four inch putty knife, and that's what I'm going to use as a, a scoop. And I'm just going to uh, basically use it as a small shovel so I can dig out this ash that's loose in the bottom of the pan. I don't want to vacuum the ash out of there 
because it'll just clog up my vacuum cleaner. But uh, I do want to get it out of here and kind of use go really slowly because already I can see there's dust floating in the air. It's like really, really fine. So here's where the vacuum cleaner comes in. What I usually do is I run the vacuum cleaner while doing this kind of work because uh, the vacuum cleaner is going to draw in all this dust that's in the air right now. So what I'm going to have to do at this point, I'm going to have to, uh, I don't want to talk over the top of the vacuum cleaner. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up the vacuum cleaner. So it's just drawing air in, uh, but it's going to make a lot of noise. So I'll probably have to overdub uh, my narration from this point on. There we go. Now the vacuum cleaner is picking up the dust that would normally just fly off into the air. So it's keeping the house a little cleaner. This vacuum cleaner is just an ordinary rigid shop vac I picked up at Home Depot. Nothing special. I'm not really worried about all this stuff. I just want to get the most of it out of there. Now I use the vacuum cleaner along the floor here. I will vacuum the dust off the door. The gaskets, I don't know if you can see that. Keep my work area clean. Okay, one area I do want to get clean is uh, just below in the in the the fire pit area here is uh, there are I don't know if you can see it here but there's a series of holes uh, on this metal plate at the bottom the air is blown up from underneath also this bar that goes just below the window uh, also has air that blows up that's to keep the glass clean as long as possible so I want to use the vacuum cleaner to vacuum these holes out there's also a clean out below that I'll show you from a different angle but I'm gonna vacuum the holes first notice that I pushed the uh, ash down to the auger I did not I'm not gonna draw those ashes out of that pit the fire pit I'm gonna leave them right there but I am going to vacuum those little air holes at the front of the fire pit. And here, let me see if I can just get in a little tighter so you can see. Uh, there you go. Now you can see there's a series of holes. And uh, those are for air. That's what uh, feeds, the, uh, feeds the fire, makes it nice and warm. All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to clean those with the vacuum cleaner. And then the clean out underneath. Uh, now we're looking at the underside of the uh, fire pot up above that I just cleaned with the vacuum cleaner. And, uh, oops, you have to pardon the uh, shaky camera. It's on top of the cardboard right now. Uh, but right here, you can see that there are two thumb screws. I'm gonna loosen these screws. Don't have to take them out, just loosen them up. And uh, there is a cover right here, this metal cover. 
and inside uh, this little area here is where the igniter is for the stove but uh, there that's also where the air comes in from underneath so I'm going to use the vacuum cleaner to clean out any ash that might have built up inside the uh, fire pit. Underneath. There we go. Top side. Okay, I don't know if you saw it, but there was a lot of uh, ash built up underneath. Okay, moving on to the next phase. It's time to clean behind the uh, heat exchanger. All right, with the, with the light in the bottom of the stove, uh, we're going to go through this together. This is the uh, heat exchanger. Uh, there's the fire pit right down here, uh, the medallion in the back, and then there's these two uh, iron plates which I'm going to be removing this one. But uh, this is something that uh, I personally have never seen, so we're all gonna see it together. I've never really looked up here. I've only felt up here, and I know at the top, right there, is a lever that I'm gonna push up on. And when you push up on that lever, you can't do it, but the uh, plate will drop forward. So uh, this is going to be fun to try and do without, yeah, it's going to make a mess. Uh, right now is when I should be running the vacuum cleaner. <laughs> okay, back out, back out, back out. <coughs> but uh, now you can see, let me take this metal plate out. Oop. There's one of the plates. I'm just going to set it off this side. All right. So I got the plate out. Now you can see the heat exchanger, one side of the heat exchanger, and you can see that there is kind of a, a unhealthy uh, buildup of crud on there. Uh, wait, let me see if I can get it without shadows here. There we go. You can see the those those fins right there. There's kind of a, a, a ugly buildup of crud on there. So this is where those brushes come in handy. I'm going to be using the brushes to clean this crud out of here. It'll make the stove so much more, um, so much more uh, efficient. Okay, and then the uh, hot gases are drawn down to, yeah. this is not easy to do. <laughs> the hot gases are drawn down through the bottom. There's a plate at the bottom of the stove, which has release levers also right here. Here's one of them. All right, just flip that lever right here. Okay, just flip that one over and there's one on the other side and that will expose the fan, but I'm not gonna do that yet because I still have the other side piece to take off yet. All right, I'm gonna remove the other plate, but this time I'm gonna run the vacuum cleaner, so. Here comes the noise. One other piece I'm going to remove is the uh, plate that goes right above the burn box here, the fire pit. Just this heavy cast iron piece. It just comes right out. Nothing holding it in but gravity. And I'm just going to set those down. And what I'll do is I'm going to hit these pieces. Here's the other one here. I'm going to hit these pieces with the vacuum cleaner and just a quick brush. But the important part is what's behind the plates. You can see all that build up. <sighs> My camera's getting filthy on these fins for the heat exchanger. Those are the things that are really going to impede the efficiency of the stove. So uh, getting a brush in there and cleaning those things off will uh, allow the stove to uh, throw a lot more heat. And I'm going to be brushing these things and as the dust comes down the vacuum cleaner hopefully will be able to catch all that.
Okay, so what you see here, I'm using that uh, flexible brush and I bent it into a shape that uh, allows me to clean the, the front of the stove a little bit easier than if it were just a big straight brush. The vacuum cleaner is uh, catching a lot of the dust. You can see how there's not a lot of dust in the air in front of me. And uh, there is a shelf at the top of the door frame up there and I'm going to use in a moment, I'm going to use the tool that came with the stove uh, to loosen the stuff that's up at the top. Also, notice how I bang out the uh, uh, tool, the uh, brush there, so uh, the dust doesn't get everywhere. And uh, also, I had to hit the uh, fire pot again because a lot of that stuff fell down into the fire pot. Here comes that tool. A lot of that stuff drops down. Okay, I gotta say this. This job would be way easier if I wasn't making a video. I'd be done by now. <laughs> okay, now you can see a little better on this side. Sorry about the other side. I didn't realize I was really in the way, but now you can really see how that vacuum cleaner uh, is used to catch the dust from uh, the, getting into the air around the house. So basically I'm using the vacuum cleaner just to pick up the dust that's flying in the air, not really using it as much to vacuum up the ash. And uh, clean off the tool before I put it back, and that's it. Okay, we're almost there. Uh, I still want to clean out around the fan, and I think for that, uh, again, I'm going to move the camera. Okay, the last little piece I'm going to clean on the stove before I put things back together uh, is that little black square that you see right in the center of the screen. Uh, and what I'm doing is I'm taking this, this uh, blue-handled brush here and I'm going to straighten it out quite a bit. That pipe that I'm talking about, this thing right here, that is where the flue gases go up and uh, it leads out to the outside, it leads out the back of the stove and to the flue pipe that goes up and out of the house. So I'm gonna run uh, uh, this, this brush in here quite a bit, but uh, yeah, it's gonna make a real mess. Uh, so I'm gonna run the vacuum cleaner again. <laughs> Alright, so you can see there's still quite a bit of ash in the bottom. I'm not really worried about that ash, but I will use my uh, little putty knife right there to scoop some more of that out before I put the stove all back together. But let's take a look at the uh, heat exchangers now. And you can see they're nice and clean. The medallion on the back of the stove, you can tell it's a compass. And uh, those... Uh, those uh, heat exchangers are going to be much more efficient. These metal, these iron plates, ah, let me just bring one up front here. These iron plates here that fit in the back of the stove, these things get so hot that really no real junk builds up on them. They just get very, very hot. Uh, so you don't have to worry about any kind of buildup on here. On the back side, 
This is the part that goes up against those heat exchangers in the back. This does get a little crud. It's really not an integral part or integral part of the uh, heat exchanger itself. So it doesn't really matter, but you know, while I got it out, I do clean them. So here I am near the end of the job. Uh, I've got all the components clean. The ash pit is empty. The two baffles are clean. The uh, fan cover is clean. The uh, little top plate is clean. And uh, I've been wearing these vinyl gloves, so my hands are still clean too. I did take a little bit of a break here. All right, so it's just a matter of putting the components back in place. And uh, the last thing I do is clean this glass right here. And for that, I'm just gonna use paper towel and some Windex, but uh, let's put all the components back in place first. All right, I'm gonna start out by replacing the uh, blower cover. This is the uh, um, tough piece, but it's, uh, it's what holds up the other two pieces. So getting it right in the right spot is not always easy. You have to align these pins. There we go. And then flip the latches up in place. Two latches, one on each side. <coughs> now, these baffle plates, these things rest on top of that, one on each side. And if you look, there's a couple of little bumps on the bottom of these things. I don't know if you can see that. You see that? These little metal those little pegs right there. There's one, there's the other one. Uh, those go down and they fit, they rest on top of uh, that plate that I just put in. You gotta find the right spot. And once you get it in, this, in place, you just push it back. It, go, it meets up with the other plate and then you pull down on the latch at the top to hold it in. I always find this one more difficult to put in than the other one. I don't know why. Perhaps because that peg, that little clip keeps on this side, the clip on this side of the stove always falls forward for some reason, but there we go. Push it right up there, throw the latch down, that's back in place, next to go is the cover for the uh, igniter and that just slides over and you got these two thumb screws just bring them up you just have to make sure they just make contact that's all they don't have to be tight the uh, flame baffle at the top here that just sits right on top the ash pit just like that Last thing to put inside is the tool, which <clears throat> you use this to clean your fire pit if you have any kind of stuff that's stuck in there. But uh, today it was pretty good looking, so I just store it. Just store it right inside. It's fireproof, so you don't have to worry about it. Okay, the last thing is to clean the glass. For that, I get to take these gloves off finally. All right, so the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clean this glass. You can see it's it's pretty hard to, to it's pretty dirty. I've got the light on the other side so it's backlit, so you'll be able to see how clean it gets here. And this is a no-brainer, a little bit of window cleaner right off the store. I don't use this special soap brand, I mean the stove brand stuff or anything. Plain old Windex will do the job pretty well. <laughs> As you can see, that's pretty filthy. Uh, So, a couple of paper towels and a little elbow grease, and it'll look pretty good very quickly. Try not to get any streaks, because they'll show up when the fire's going. Now the glass, can, can you even see that? Can you see how lovely clean it is? Look, I'll put my hand on the other side. Ooh, look at that. So that's it for my stove. Just a matter of closing the door, latching it, and we're, we're good to go here. 
fire that baby up. Uh, before I do that, I'm going to remove the cardboard around here, pick up all my dirty paper towels, and get all my cleaning stuff out of here. Then uh, it's just a matter of uh, turning, this, turning the knob and letting it fire up. Well, there you have it. I've taken a simple 20 minute job and turned it into an hour and a half production. But I did it just for you. So be sure to like, favorite, and subscribe uh, if you enjoy this video. Uh, one thing about the vacuum cleaner, I just want to say you notice I did not use the vacuum cleaner to suck up all the stuff in the bottom of the stove. Uh, one reason for that is the safety reason, of course, but even though I know that there's no hot embers in the stove. The uh, other reason was mainly, and this is my main reason, is because that p particles in the bottom of the stove are so fine, that ash is so fine, that it would uh, very quickly clog the filter and make the vacuum cleaner uh, totally useless. Uh, so, uh, keep the vacuum cleaner running at peak efficiency. I try not to uh, use it to pick up very much uh, of the ash in the bottom of the stove. Instead, I used the uh, putty knife and uh, kind of shoveled it out a little bit at a time. Uh, I will, in the future, take the uh, vacuum cleaner filter out. I'll bring it out in my backyard, use an air compressor, blast all the uh, soot out of there, and get that vacuum cleaner running at peak efficiency just the way this stove is now running at peak efficiency. So thanks for watching, and have a great day. Bye-bye.